Okay, we're continuing with lesson 11, analyzing word choice. And remember, we started talking about different literary devices that you can use. Analogies and allusions are some of them. So we're going to go a little bit more in depth about those two um, types of literary devices. So an analogy is a comparison of two objects, events, people, or ideas that to make the two items more clear to the audience. So analogies, similes, and metaphors are closely related because they all are used to compare different things. You can use metaphors and similes to create, create an analogy. And the purpose is to explain, not just show the reader a comparison, okay? So um, an analogy would be something like, what you're doing is as useful as rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. Now this is comparing the task between being done to the task of rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. But the ultimate goal is not to compare that one task to another. The ultimate goal is to communicate that the first task is useless by comparing it to a similar, similarly useless task, such as rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic, right? It would be useless to rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic while the Titanic is sinking. There's, there's no use to that, okay? Now, an illusion is a brief or indirect reference to a well-known person, character, place, or event. And we did just watch a video um, that talked about illusions, but we're going to watch another one just to kind of make it a little more clear. You should not have to explain who the person is because it should be a well-known character. So if I'm making an illusion to like Cinderella, let's just say, um, and I say, <clears throat> I need to get home by midnight or my car might turn into a carriage, right? Or a pumpkin, or my car might turn into a pumpkin, okay? So basically I'm alluding to Cinderella and people who've seen Cinderella would know that her carriage turned into, was supposed to turn back into a pumpkin at midnight, right? So that is me not having to explain, I wouldn't have to explain that to anybody. You would already know that because you're familiar with the, the story Cinderella, okay? Now, the, an example, another example is at the time, I wished I could have rubbed a lamp and I thought I would ha have had everything I needed, but I was wrong. This alludes to the genie in a lamp that granting your wishes, right? But I don't have to explain it for my audience to understand that. You auto automatically know if I say, I wished I could have rubbed a lamp and I thought, thought, I, thought I would have had everything I needed, you're automatically thinking, oh, you're rubbing that genie's lamp so the genie can come out and grant your wishes. I don't have to explain that to you that I just, you would already just know this. Okay, so let's watch a couple of videos. One's on analogies and the other one's on illusions. These are a little bit, um, the analogies video is a little bit long. It's about six minutes. And then the illusion video is only a couple of minutes long. So this will be a little bit longer of a lesson today, but please bear with me and watch the videos, guys. People often establish relationships between people, animals, or things to better understand them. When an idea is difficult to understand, your mind creates an analogy between what is confusing and what is understandable to help you better comprehend the idea. An analogy is simply a comparison of two or more people, places, objects, animals, or ideas. Analogies show how words are related. They compare two things and use familiar words to identify unfamiliar or missing words. To understand an analogy, you must first identify the relationship between two words. Some types of word relationships include synonyms, antonyms, part of a whole, cause and effect, and item in a category. What is the relationship between the words mad and angry? These two words are synonyms because they have similar meanings. What is the relationship between the words asleep and awake? They are antonyms because asleep is the opposite of awake. What is the relationship between a wheel and a bicycle? This is a part of a whole relationship because a wheel is part of a bicycle. What is the relationship between heating and melting? Heating something can cause it to melt. For example, heating an ice pop will cause it to melt. Because the heating occurred first, it is the cause, while melting is the effect. This is a cause and effect relationship. How are cake and dessert related? 
cake is a type of dessert. This is an item in a category relationship. Analogies can be written in word form, but they are usually separated by colons. In this example, the words fish and ocean are being compared, so they are separated by a space, a colon, and another space. Deer and forest are being compared the same way. When one set of words is compared to another set of words, the two sets are separated by two colons. The proper way to read this analogy is fish is to ocean as deer is to forest. When you are interpreting analogies, ask yourself, how are these words related? For example, a part of a whole relationship is when one object is part of another or part of a whole. Think of it like a piece of a puzzle. The jigsaw piece is the part and the entire puzzle is the whole. Consider these objects, roof, door, and windows. Remember to ask yourself, how are these words related? These are all parts of a house. Therefore, roof, door, and windows are the parts, and house is the whole. Which word completes the part of a whole relationship in this example? Tree, foot, or dog? A tail is not part of a tree, nor is it part of a foot. The correct answer is dog, because a tail is part of a dog. What word completes this analogy? Peel is to banana, as blank is to flower. Is the correct answer choice stem, rose, or wilt? Identify the relationship between the first set of words. A peel is a part of a banana. A rose is not part of a flower. It is a type of flower. Wilt is not correct because it is an action performed by a flower. The correct answer is stem because a stem is part of a flower. The analogy now reads, peel is to banana as stem is to flower. Again, an analogy can also have a cause and effect relationship. A cause is why something happened. To identify a cause, ask yourself, what happened first? An effect is what happened. To identify an effect, ask yourself, what happened second? Identify the cause and effect relationship between the words exercise and sweat. Ask the question, what happened first? Exercise happened first, so it is the cause. Sweat is usually the result of exercise, therefore it is the effect. Which analogy choice has the same relationship as the words hunger and eat? Hunger is to eat as up is to down child is to kid or tired is to sleep. This is a cause and effect relationship because hunger causes someone to eat. Up and down are opposites or antonyms, so this is not the correct choice. A child and a kid are similar, which means they are synonyms, not a cause and effect. Tired and sleep is the choice that shows a cause and effect relationship. You know this because being tired can cause someone to sleep. The analogy would therefore read, hunger is to eat as tired is to sleep. An analogy can also have an item in a category relationship. This shows a relationship between a category and something in that category. One way to recognize an item in a category relationship is to identify when one object is a type of something else. For example, chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry are all items. The category is ice cream flavors. Ice cream flavors and the three types of flavors have an item in a category relationship. Which word completes the item in a category analogy? Elephant is to blank. Is it trunk, mammal, or gray? A trunk is a part of an elephant, and gray describes an elephant's skin. The correct answer is mammal because an elephant is a type of mammal. Elephant is the item and mammal is the category. Which answer choice completes this set of analogies? Carrot is to vegetable as blank is to blank. Remember to begin by identifying the relationship between the first two words. A carrot is a type of vegetable. A screen is part of a computer. Friends and enemies are antonyms. The correct answer is ballet and dance because ballet is a type of dance. This item in a category analogy should read, carrot is to vegetable as ballet is to dance. Analogies are word puzzles that challenge you to examine relationships between words. Once you determine the type of analogy, you can complete the analogy by identifying the choices that fall under that type. Sometimes my dog is Dr. Jekyll. 
but other times, he is Mr. Hyde. Why does the man refer to a well-known character when describing his dog? You remember the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, right? Dr. Jekyll is kind and friendly, but sometimes he turns into Mr. Hyde, who is violent and evil. By referring to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the man can quickly illustrate his dog's personality. This is called illusion. An illusion is a reference to someone or something commonly known from literature, history, religion, or other areas of culture. It helps writers and speakers express ideas quickly and effectively. Find another illusion to describe the dog's personality.